OK, let's start with the big breaking news. And Thomas Tuchel is the new Chelsea head coach. Let's get straight to the club's training ground. A statement from Chelsea Football Club any moment now. They have just announced this uh, huge news. Oh. <laughs> It's important. I think I always argue with a lot of my friends about that and don't try and play other people's role. Obviously, no. you, you allow imagination. Yeah. But of if course. you're trying to be two or three different things, no. it's not going to be no, successful. It, no, not at all. Not at all. And it's very important that we don't, we don't uh, um, uh, suppress creativity. And the opposite. But in your room. Chelsea and my plan of Chelsea, I want to improve. So nice to have this bond with the fans. I'm very happy about it. To be part of this club feels absolutely amazing. But on the other side, on the diagonal switch, yeah. he needs to arrive. Yeah. And it, it sometimes also... And This is the team that nobody wants to play against. Sometimes it's also necessary that you come in even here, yeah. like when they play here, that you don't yeah. get isolated, you don't isolate yourself because the distance can be quite long. Chelsea Football Club Champions of Europe! I, I told the team just before the game, nothing can happen because I brought the shoes. I gave a promise in Paris, uh, where the president gave me the shoes as a present, uh, that I will wear them when we reach a um, Champions League final. We reached a Champions League final, but I left them at home and I didn't let them send back, so or let them send to us and, and not, did not wear them in the final. And we lost against Bayern Munich, so I am always... There was always this thought in my, my head somewhere and uh, I should have uh, I should have kept my word, I should have walked the talk. And so when you arrive now, I told my wife at home, I said, please, bring me the shoes. And the idea was born and then I informed my staff and then we had the very last talk in the dressing room. I explained the, the situation to my players and told them, there is one thing I learned from the last final, you have to, you have to, to keep your word and they, don't, they should not worry because I wear the lucky shoes today. And, uh, <laughs> well, perfect. Have you still got them? I, I, I kept them. Um, Christian Pulisic made me keep them <laughs> and said uh, if you go again, you wear them again. Can I ask a question? Yes. What was uh, your greatest moment in your 10 years in Chelsea? Uh, uh -huh. The second Champions League final, this time is different. T tell me what you feel. I'm so relieved, so happy. My family is here, my parents are here. What a moment to share. It's for my grandmother, she's watching at home. For my granddad, who does not live anymore. It's very emotional. It's, uh, I could have never imagined. As a, as a young coach that I can touch this cup. website saying that Roman Abramovich has completed the sale of Chelsea Football Club and related companies to an investment group led by Todd Burley and Clear Lake Capital. Um, we know of course this sale has been something that's been a long time coming after months and months of negotiation. It was a deal that was approved on when What's your day-to-day -day relationship with Todd Burley for example? How does that work? Very communicative. Re more uh, so with, than with, it was before. With, with Todd and uh, with uh, Bedat because it's necessary because mm. we have never worked together. Uh, they have never owned a, f a football club. Um, we Do don't, you feel like you're teaching them? Uh, I try to. Well, Thomas Tuchel is no longer the Chelsea manager. And they found you amusing for a while, the people of this city. But the one thing they love more than a hero is to see a hero fail, fall, die trying. 
in spite of everything you've done for them. Eventually, they will hate. Chelsea have appointed Graham Potter as their new head coach, replacing Thomas Tuchel, who was sacked in the wake of the Champions League defeat by Dinamo Zagreb. <laughs> it's the start of a of a really exciting period, I think. Uh, new ownership, who I was really, really ex excited with and impressed by. Firstly, as people, and then the, the vision for the club and what they wanted to do. Of course, the history of the, of the club speaks for itself, but it's about trying to create that again in our own way. Um, my career, I suppose, has, 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 has gone forward and I had a great time in, in Sweden and come back to the UK and had fantastic experiences and it's just nice to be able to... Our ambition is to, is to, is to try, and, try and do as well as we can between now and the end of the season and you have to do that by winning the next match. The, the ambition will never be to finish fourth or to finish third or to finish second. You know, that, that's the ambition of this club is to win. But if you're asking one question, yeah, go on. why are you making, changing your formation so many times? <laughs> <laughs> good, good question, good question. Um, well, changing the formation is, um, we don't really see the formation as the end goal. We see that actually how the team's playing. The team needs to look consistent regardless of the formation. And then it's about the, the personnel, about how you want to attack the opponent, how you want to defend against the opponent. I suppose other things we consider. But um, yeah, hopefully there's there's things that look the same even though the shape changes. Graham uncharted yeah, territory. <laughs> Graham Potter's team end up getting the three points. They weren't great. They weren't at their best. Scored at good times right at the start, and then that one in the second half from Mason Mount kind of settled them down. So it's amazing when things are going well for you. You don't have to play so well, and you can you can get the job done. A string of results which leave them amid the mediocrity of mid-table and barely relevant in the big boys' conversation. A conversation in which, once more, Mares and the Manchester City boys are playing a vocal part. Graham Potter has more problems than he cares to consider. Problems not just with results, but with personnel. They were falling like flies from the very start today, and Chelsea are fading out of the business end of the Premier League. Tuchel took over his first 10 games, he scored 11. Potter scored 11 in his first 10 games. But the amount conceded is Tuchel's 2 versus Potter's 10. They're lacking something, and I think it's a little bit of arrogance to some way when Chelsea and they're lacking a little bit of work rate I would say it's almost like yeah. the game's going to come our way you know we've got some nice players we're going to play our way around pressure you know we, we, we're, we're a good side and it'll all come to us eventually but it's all a bit too nicey nicey at the moment at Chelsea you know uh, they didn't really I think he's under pressure mm. massively I think he's yeah. one winning nine or something yeah. like that or it's just great right now they're going through a and, the, and the criticism of Brighton when he was the man not, the, not at the beginning of this season yeah, the yeah. nice football is there an end product and are they tough enough to, to, to cope with the very best teams? But they don't even play well, Chelsea. No. And maybe, maybe he hasn't been there long, but he's done, he's got a worse record than Tuchel yeah. had now. Absolutely. Uh, you know, this season. And yeah, I think they will strengthen this one. And I think they should. Mm. But they still he have, needs some good results. Good players, I mean, he hit the crossbar today, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a bit closer than the last few games, but we'll take a couple of unforced errors, which 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 gave us a problem. Other than that, the same players letting us down. Jorginho's not good enough. Mount's not good enough. Havertz isn't good enough. Gallagher's not good enough. Ziyech isn't good enough. Kula Bali's not good enough. I could keep going. 80% of this squad need to fuck off by the end of this rebuild. I saw the team sheet today. I saw the team sheet today, and after this result, there's no one more to blame than Graham Potter. Graham Potter is a fraud. He's a fraud. People talk about this whole thing about him playing at Brighton. Great football, great football this. He had a 34% win rate at Brighton and he's got a 32% win rate at Chelsea already right now. It's, it's, it's a walking contradiction. Mount not good enough, Havertz not good enough, Ziyech not good enough, Gallagher not good enough. Lucky to even draw that, for being honest. I don't care. The midfield's not good enough. Offers us fuck all creativity. We could barely play the ball out of the back, let alone get into the midfield. And then you play it up front and you've got the hideous twins, Mount and Havertz, who are just turnover merchants. 
unbearable, insufferable. I was admitted to hospital last week, seeing these performances, hopeless performances. I cannot bear anymore. This guy has to be sacked immediately. Don't bother, do us a favor. Sack him immediately. Sack him immediately. Get out!